A very good evening to all of you. Today, you know, uh, before I will start the session, I just want to share uh, with you that uh, as I promised uh, that we will have another more session for ecological economics, we'll have in the month of May. Uh, so in the meantime, so I thought that it's better to uh, continue or complete other course. That's why we are taking up this course, MSD 016. Okay, so uh, uh, don't worry, uh, we are in the process and we will be uh, having more session uh, for ecological economics. Okay, so today, uh, this is the first session of uh, MSD 016 strategies and models for sustainability. Uh, from the beginning, uh, you know, since October onward, uh, after the first induction session, we are continuously having this online counseling session, interaction with all, all of you. And uh, with this, we assume that, or I hope so, you have clear understanding about the uh, uh, concept of sustainability science and different pillars of sustainable development, which we talk in different courses. And uh, I know there are a few uh, more sessions is needed in ecological economics, but we will assume that you have uh, clear understanding on the basic concept of ecological economics uh, or we can say pillars of economics uh, uh, from the lens of sustainability. So after having a uh, good understanding, I can say this is a good understanding in the principal concept approach of sustainability science and its tenets. Now in course six onwards, means from this course six onward, or we start uh, from course five, we can say of course five, but course five is also one of the uh, important pillars of sustainable development. We can say uh, that is uh, sometimes some of the authors uh, is all, are of the opinion that uh, this institution is also uh, the one of the pillar and taken at, as a fourth pillar. So. After having a quick understanding all the dimensions of sustainable development, now we let us have a quick look into uh, that. What are the strategies and the models in course uh, number uh, one six? Then it will be followed by some of the challenges, global challenges of sustainable development. Uh, so this, this is about the interskeletal of our course postgraduate diploma in sustainable science. When we look into the strategies and the models for sustainability from the point of basic principle and the concept. And uh, that uh, here, uh, as per our open distance learning pedagogy, we have divided those important concepts into four blocks. The, four, the first block that will be focused on strategies for sustainability. When we have an understanding about the sustainability concept and it's some of these approaches, uh, its concept now, uh, we have, uh, we must try to look into the, what are the probable <coughs> strategies for achieving sustainable development. When we talk about the strategy of sustainable development, we know that sustainable development is achieving, I mean, sustainability uh, from an integrative perspective. When we talk about achieving sustainability, we know the meaning of sustainable development, we know the sustainability principle, then, you know, uh, that can be look into I mean, broadly look into infrastructure development. And if we look in the social perspective, health and sanitation, then value addition and recycling, reuse and recovery. These are some of the important, I mean, uh, core concept, uh, which we have to look as in strategy, but when you develop a strategy for sustainable development. When, to, again, uh, when we are looking for a sustainable approach uh, for a rule, uh, in particular and sustainable development in general. You know, uh, when we have uh, that so much advance uh, in technology, information communication technology, so for developing the project uh, from the starting from, you know, uh, scripts to the, uh, I mean, uh, the full phase and implementation, post-implementation of those projects of sustainable development project, we need to understand some of the more approaches, of, uh, approaches uh, we need to follow uh, uh, at different level. So in that, uh, then knowledge is very important. You know, uh, this, uh, this, uh, uh, the, uh, the advancement knowledge has to be 
use and uh, the knowledge, the management of knowledge is also important. So in this blog, we will talk about uh, remote sensing environment information system. And uh, we have already talked about natural resource management in the uh, second course, but here, when you talk about strategies and models for sustainability, you know, sustainability started from the local level. So that's why we need to have a clear understanding about the, what kind of action plans need to be, I mean, follow or need to be developed for uh, natural resource management at micro level. Yeah. Then few of the concept uh, proposed by Professor Swaminathan on that village knowledge center and village resource center, and how to develop when we talk about sustainability, particularly in India, uh, you know, uh, when then when we talk about uh, that uh, infrastructure development also. First, if you want to minimize some of the impact, who is this, uh, I mean, the, who is this concentrating uh, in the form of uh, the development is uh, that urban growth. So, so to minimize or to limit such kind of so, uh, avoidable circumstances, uh, we uh, then uh, the another option is we develop uh, that uh, rural development in a proper planning way. That's why BioVillage is one of so developing a BioVillage is also one of the option which we can follow for sustainable development. Then block three, yeah, we'll talk about, you know, India is the evidence with, uh, I mean, uh, agricultural growth because of the green revolution. But in the same time, we know that some, uh, some of the consequences we are suffering because of the green revolution. Then when we know that there are some negative impacts, some limitation of green revolution, what do we have to do? So Professor Swamina turned the bluff uh, uh, is that we need to uh, uh, have a paradigm shift from green revolution to evergreen revolution. That all that concept will be learned in block three. And block four, you know, since independence, if you look into India, uh, then in case of India, for example, if we are taking uh, that uh, in India in particular, number of programs at different level, it may be in policy level, it may be in panchayat level, it may be initiated by the local community, it may be initiated by the uh, government, maybe, I mean, in the, uh, I mean, what I say is that it may be top down approach, it may be bottom up approach. A number of, I mean, successful project planning and the models is exist here. So, in from that, we have selected few of the models which, uh, as a student on sustainable science and studying this course in uh, that uh, India. So, we have taken four dif uh, different uh, models, uh, I mean, uh, three different models uh, uh, in block uh, uh, four. One is that is a Himalayan environment that would, uh, that will, I mean, uh, take an example of uh, that mountain environment, then, then to sustainable integrated farming of coastal area, then cultural landscape-based sustainable development model. That is very unique where we are talking about culture should be center of sustainable development that concept with, with an example of uh, that uh, in, uh, that zoom uh, cultivation in how zoom cultivation is blended with modern technology uh, that was successfully implemented in the state of nagaland by uh, nagaland environment protection uh, that uh, uh, environment protection organization you know, since 1970s will be uh, we will try to understand how they have implemented so coming to this uh, to this topic, when I told you that when we are trying to have a strategies first and foremost strategies that keep that should be keep in our mind is what kind of infrastructure has to be developed when we are planning or where when we are our objective is to achieve sustainable development. So in this uh, uh, session on sustainable infrastructure will touch upon definition of infrastructure in brief. What are the classification of infrastructure means because when we are looking for the sustainable infrastructure, we need to have this concept in our mind. Then what are the characteristics of infrastructure? How the infrastructure has to be developed is different processes, approaches, and how to achieve sustainable infrastructure. 
and at the end of this session, we will try to have an understanding on the sustainable development goals of uh, SDGs, uh, that uh, UN SDGs. It's indicator to look into the uh, the progress of infrastructure. So we'll have a quick look into sustainable development infrastructure. As we know that infrastructure is essential for increasing economic progress in one side. On the other side, if you look into you know, that, what we are talking about 1960s and 70s, especially in India about the poverty eradication. So when we have economic progress and uh, that uh, then with an objective of reducing uh, poverty, infrastructure is the first, I mean, components or first uh, we have to uh, tap. So we know that when we have the infrastructure, automatically there will be growth in economy, growth in social progress. And most of the pillars we are talking about, we have a proper infrastructure development. Your, there will be sustainable uh, environment, there will be sustainable economic progress, sustainable society. Then we know that when we look into the different infrastructure which is, exists two days in front of us, which was started during 1950s, I'm talking in, uh, uh, taking in my mind as in India, we are discussing in case of Indian, uh, Indian uh, in our nation that we have seen a number of infrastructure which was not properly planned and which was not looking in the long term objective when we develop the infrastructure that we can tag that as insuff insufficient infrastructure achievements that have a negative impact. So the point is that infrastructure matters a lot. When you properly plan it, you will have a long term sustainable, uh, you will be able to achieve long term sustainability or sustainable development. If you are not properly managed, maintain it or many plan it, then it will have negative impact at different you know, dimension uh, when we are trying to achieve a sustainable development. So infrastructure improvement, both large and small also can provide significant economic benefit which I have already talked about. Therefore, infrastructure can be defined as the physical framework of facilities with the finiteness of resources and the plan for including the coming generation. That's why I'm talking about long-term infrastructure. That's where, when we talk about infrastructure, we have to, I mean, look into that. Along with the present situation that the goods and services provided to the public now have a positive environment impact in the long run. Because when we develop infrastructure, it's about goods and services, which is going to be, I mean, provided uh, by that uh, the way uh, that infrastructure, right? So we have to keep all this in our mind, right? So the infrastructure, if you look into the different dictionary, uh, the meaning of infrastructure, you will find out that, for example, in Colin Dictionary, it is uh, defined as uh, the infrastructure of a country, society, organization that consists of the basic facilities what we're talking about, transport, communication, power supplies and building that enable it to function. To function the country means link and to have the flow of knowledge, flow of everything, economic flows or cell flow. So again, if you look into the Cambridge Dictionary, it is about uh, infrastructure, it's about the basic system services. What when we talk about the basic system, it is about the connection of people from one place to another, that is transport and it's the connect. It is about the, uh, that uh, power, power supply that uh, in a country, in an organization, that, that had to work effectively, right? So what are the classification infrastructure then? Infrastructure can be looked into, technically can be looked into two uh, category. One is hard infrastructure, another is soft infrastructure. When we talk about in hard infrastructure, it refers to the large physical network necessary for the functioning of modern industrial nation, right? That's why when we talk about when India was a young nation, still we are a young nation, when you talk about the infrastructure, our main objective is to develop as much as hard infrastructure, like, uh, like you know, uh, that extension or development uh, of different highways, road, road network, and so on. 
then sovereign fry structure refers to all the institutions which are required to maintain the economic, health, cultural, social standards of a country. Because when we talk about infrastructure, our understanding as a layman is it is about what we're talking this about only, you know, school, colleges, airport, and road connection. Not only that. We have done, we have, there is another uh, that uh, hidden behind that. That is, I would call that soft infrastructure that talks about who is going to manage that. How to make it function. That is soft infrastructure. That is about your economic, your financial system, education system, healthcare system, law enforcement system, as well as every emergency system, fair survey and so on. So how does infrastructure include, as I told you, and most of us know that, that it include transportation, energy, water management, communication system, waste management, art monitoring management system. Then on the, on the, on the other hand, sub infrastructure is the institutional, mechanism, the industry we have to establish, then, uh, then social structure, then cultural structure, all these are soft infrastructure. When, and if you look into details about the types of hard infrastructure, you know, transportation, we talk about transportation is more about water transport, land transport, air transport, and it's allied. When we talk about energy um, infrastructure, now it is, in, you know, when we talk about energy infrastructure is about uh, that, uh, Electrified, electrified, like electrical, uh, giving electricity connection, right? Uh, then, uh, uh, then to other form, like for example, uh, then to, we are, for example, India is looking into 100% electrification. So this is about energy infrastructure. It may be from, I mean, uh, the source of energy may be uh, from any form. It may be from uh, that uh, renewable energy, like what uh, windmill and so on. Then water management infrastructure, this is very much important. It can be uh, said that it is also one of the uh, social component because when we talk about infrastructure, uh, it may, as I told you and they, most of us know that it brings a social changes. It brings a, a social value. Uh, I mean, improve the social value. So. Uh, not only that, when we look into uh, uh, that basic tenet of the sustainability, and uh, for when we uh, uh, we started, uh, we uh, want to develop infrastructure. Infrastructure. If you look in basically, what are the basic amenities we have to give when you develop infrastructure? It's about water. It's about good air. It's about food. It's about um, ending poverty. Means giving livelihood. So. Water management infrastructure is also one of the important infrastructure. Then communication infrastructure. When you have all this infrastructure, there is a need for communication, right? And communication between or among the different component of the society at different level. Then of course, when as far as the human is concerned and whenever we have developed a number of infrastructure on the, uh, and on the other hand, it is a, uh, I, mean, uh, uh, I mean, general phenomenon that we produce a lot of waste and waste have negative impact on one side. On the other hand, if we properly utilize that, then that will become an important assets to uh, that uh, uh, resource cycle. So waste management is also one of the types of hard infrastructure. Then art monitoring and measurement network. Uh, that is very important because you know natural uh, disasters happening, man-made disasters are happening. So we have to be aware from time to time uh, what kind of weather condition, what are the possible uh, climatic condition, maybe I mean uh, weather condition maybe in this month and so on. Uh, uh, for example, a, uh, that uh, a farmers needs to know about the weather condition uh, during the winter season. Uh, their cropping season and so on. So, uh, our monitoring measurement networks play an important role in um, a proper. That uh, is one of the important component uh, in developing uh, the proper uh, infrastructure development progress. Then, sub infrastructure, as I told you, includes both physical assets such as highly specialized buildings, specialized buildings and equipment, as well as non-physical systems such as the rules and regulation governing the various system, financing of the system, as well as the system organization by 
uh, who is highly skilled in specialized professional art trend. In some, what we can say is so infrastructure is about maintenance and the management of those hard infrastructure, right? And it includes institutional infrastructure, what we're talking about in financial system, government, law enforcement, political, legislative, justice and penal system, police, fair protection, ambulance, etc. So you know, on the same time, we need to develop uh, that another uh, this, uh, infrastructure for giving and uh, that uh, level improvement, no others like industrial infrastructure is also important. And uh, that's in the form of manufacturing mines and processing plant. Agriculture is also in this one of the kind of industrial infrastructure, forestry, fisheries, etc. Then social infrastructure includes that takes care about a, a society that about healthcare system, educational research system, social welfare system. And of course, last one, you know, cultural sport and recreational infrastructure is also important. Uh, so sports, recreational infrastructure, all these are under sub infrastructure. What are the characteristics of infrastructure? It can look into general two. One is general characteristic is we know that what then the economic characteristic that. So when we talk about the general characteristics, for example, when we have a proper, I mean, uh, transport system, then if you have a, for, let us take an example, your road infrastructure is good, then that will minimize your travel time. When you minimize your travel time, that appears to impact into the, your output. That that is uh, the general characteristic. For example, in Delhi and the other metro cities, we have metro train. When metro train introduced into the as uh, in the system as a uh, better infrastructure, it minimizes. Uh, it saves a lot of time. Not only your time, it improves your health condition. Also, otherwise, you could have. Uh, I mean, spend more than two hours or three hours. Uh, to reach to your workplace from your home. Then, then when we talk about uh, example, one example, water supply and sanitation, when we have uh, better water supply system, good quality water supply system and a better sanitation facility that takes up, up uh, that cares about health of every each and every individual. So when you have good, good health and, uh, and you have uh, better sanitation that have better uh, productivity. So, uh, in the same time, when we have those kind of facilities, like you know, your school is in the nearby, when you have a better healthcare system, that have and uh, moreover, that also have a direct impact uh, to the uh, positive impact to the, uh, the poor people, especially in poor people that will reduce in poverty and inequality as well. So there are a number of, I mean, general characteristics. Uh, then another infrastructure is an, uh, that in that what when we talk about general characteristic also uh, uh, we can look that infrastructure with positive impact environmental impact simple example when we talk about general characteristic so is what to use for irrigation for purpose of being treated right because otherwise your service water will create another problem right when it is properly treated and it is used for irrigation, that is a good infrastructure. This is a general characteristic because of that, then you have the benefit that. Then reclaim, reclaim landfill sites and wetland used for sewage, which are let, uh, later developed into recreation and plant. Park. Duckweed ponds, that's wastewater treatment, you know, duck with that particular duckweed, they absorb uh, the wastewater, I mean, uh, that uh, waste, uh, that um, pollutant. And at uh, the same time, it is a high, I mean, quality protein feedstock. Then methane, uh, that methane extraction from sewage treatment plant, uh, then that can for your, uh, that uh, cooking also. And decomposition of organic material, uh, they can be even as used as a foil. In the same time, uh, this is an example of wastewater treatment. Uh, there, when, if you do not properly plant it, then, then it has a negative impact. For example, under investment sewers, then there may be leakage, there may be more instead of, I mean, I mean uh, having positive impact or uh, that uh, you, when you do not have that proper wastewater treatment plan, plan instead of, I mean, uh, uh, proper treatment of water, it will have another impact of, I mean, extending 
and those waste in nearby area. For example, poor maintenance of solid waste and uh, that's inappropriate uh, that when you are uh, um, developing those kind of infrastructure in a uh, not in a proper place, then that will make a nuisance. Then economic, if you look into economic characteristic uh, is uh, that modern infrastructure like the supply service through network delivery system designed to serve multi set of users. For example, pipe water, electric power, telecommunication, sewage and rail service. Now they have highly economic. Now this economic value, you can see that uh, it is very useful. When, for example, in that, in economic characteristic, if you delve into economic characteristic, there is some um, phenomenon, uh, some, uh, I mean, uh, term we need to understand uh, is, one is sunk cost, right? Sunk cost uh, is an investment which may not be converted to other uses. For example, when you talk about our pipe water, you can, that pipe water you cannot use for other purpose, right? That was dedicated for pipe only. And you cannot use for other purpose. So, so we, for that pipe water, we invest a lot of money uh, to make the delivery system works. This kind of uh, this characteristic cost uh, uh, of investment economic this cost some investment, uh, some uh, some cost. Then another is called, uh, another is the number of competition in infrastructure and, different, and across different sector and between different technology. Uh, so, uh, for example, many infrastructure facilities are uh, characterized by declining costs, leading to what is known as natural monopoly situation. Uh, the main natural monopoly situation is uh, happening because of technological factor, not due to uh, policy. For example. Uh, uh, in the, this uh, metropolitan area, here in slide you see the example is that uh, new infrastructure like rapid tra transport rail, over bridge, uh, foot bridge, and good communication infrastructure as the acceptance for technology is faster in geographic location. Right? It is not because of policy; it is because of the improve in your technology. That's why we switch. We bet. I mean, we prefer to have such kind of infrastructure. So this is about uh, and that uh, the correct economic character, characteristic. And another economic characteristic is zero marginal cost or no rise in marginal cost. For example, when we provide uh, benefits of public good infrastructure to an additional con consumer, it will not lead to extra expenses. See, uh, here also giving an example of dam, right? So. When we already develop a dam and uh, 400 people and if capacity is increased, if it is increased to, I mean, if it is reached to uh, 200 people, we need not to spend uh, another uh, I mean, expenditure, right? So this point next is uh, how infrastructure are developing. So, in, so in, uh, what is infrastructure development? Infrastructure development may be defined as a development or creation of an asset with a large scale Use of potential and uh, and uh, a very large scale risk of benefit with impact demography and the financial well being of chosen location development, a location for development. So, this developing uh, infrastructure uh, can be taken in. Uh, four important modes. One is project mode, phase mode, parallel mode, and plans mode. If you look into the mode of infrastructure development across the globe, or combination of any of these four. Then what is project mode? Project mode is, for example, the, ra uh, the railroad construction project between any X and Y location. Then when we talk about uh, phase mode, it is about the construction of dams phase-wise. It, it happens phase-wise. When you talk about parallel mode, for example, in, uh, that um, parallelly different groups or different, I mean, uh, that the institution they develop in the same time. For example, ICT and telecommunication infrastructure, right? That government is also developing uh, that telecommunication facility. In the same time, private partners also they are also developing. Then, in case of plans mode, it is uh, the government of any nation decide to work in large scale. Like um, we have golden quadrilateral and corridor project and we have 
look this policy where we are going to reach to the Asian countries. Uh, these are some of the example. And what are the process? <coughs> process can be looked into uh, altering mode, expanding mode, abandonment mode, and archiving mode. When we talk about altering mode, it is about uh, altering, changing the existing. For example, uh, singling or uh, that uh, singling instead of um, that stone road, we replace with it cemented road, or this can be replaced with uh, black topping, right? Then uh, we used to have um, uh, the telephone cable. Uh, uh, now we, it is, um, I mean, replaced with uh, fiber optic. Then expanding mode. In expanding mode is increasing the risk capacity in terms of quality and quantity of an existing infrastructure. Like example is already here. We have uh, that infrastructure, national highway, railway, then national highway and so on. Then abandonment mode completely discard existing infrastructure and adopt any of the new, like it may be altering mode, expanding mode. Okay. Then archiving mode. For example, we have uh, Ford, all Ford, all the, uh, these, uh, I mean, Spanish. Then we make it an archive and uh, we make it for tourist attraction. And so, in fact, if you look into the way we are developing the infrastructure, and uh, we can say that developing developing infrastructure is a way of slowly adding uh, value to the civilization. What you put, uh, we are I mean, uh, seeing in front of us different infrastructure, it was added from time to time, and it is a value to our civilization. In what are the approach used for infrastructure de development? It's, we know that when we, uh, have to develop an infrastructure. Uh, we have to develop infrastructure. We need to have proper planning. So we have to uh, make the proper planning for developing the infrastructure. Uh, then only we will be able to have a uh, sustainable infrastructure. Then how to develop sustainably? A number of research studies have been taken uh, in the recent past by different authors, different uh, uh, that academics, different scientists and different develop, uh, development practitioners and so on. So if you look into those studies, most of the studies are uh, devot devoted to the estimation of productivity and infrastructure investment, while others are attempted to find an access between broader investment and infrastructure. So there always, what they find is that uh, there is always a strong correlation exists between your per G GDP and availability of certain services, such as uh, telecommunication, power, road access, and safe drinking water. The point is that that your gross, gross domestic product is directly related to your uh, basic infrastructure facility. So, with a rise in uh, what uh, they have found is that with a rise in per capita GDP then composition of infrastructure changes significantly. Point is that infrastructure give economic growth. When you have economic growth, automatically the composition of infrastructure also changes. That has a direct impact, bottom. So when we develop an infrastructure, few of the points we need to uh, I mean, uh, I mean, keep in our minds are that when we develop uh, infrastructure, we should consider that such kind of infrastructure should reach to all the community equally in uh, urban rural pockets. Means there should not be any disparity uh, between this. As we define that, uh, we know that we have urban, urban and rural divide. We must avoid all that, right? Because for example, why urbanization is happening? The facilities, uh, what is uh, getting today in urban is not getting in the rural. So, we must try to avoid that. Then only we'll be able to um, minimize or at least we'll be able to control urbanization. Then consider the optimal utilization of resources. Then consider the development of infrastructure resources used for the present and future generation. It means long-term planning is important, right? And then when we plan for new infrastructure creation and we have to look into the existing infrastructure so when we know the existing infrastructure and uh, 
and if we try to have a, I mean, long-term infrastructure facilities, then by following what we discuss in that, whether it has to be uh, such kind of new uh, development has to be, we follow the uh, plunge mode or the, the altering mode or uh, that extension mode that we have to uh, follow in that way. Then uh, when we plan for enhancing existing infrastructure based on availability of resources, uh, we have uh, to follow that then we have to provide such kind of infrastructure that are also based on need assessment of the user apart from the perceived needs. Because we sometimes we say that as a development practitioner and then to <coughs> policy planner that, that okay, they perceive that this is the needs. We do not look into the, I mean, the ground level. So we need to follow that need assessment. So we have to develop uh, such kind of infrastructure that should be preserved if they can narrate history for many generations like heritage monument and tourism sites. Point is that when we are, I mean, implementing or we're developing infrastructure, we should uh, give the cultural values also. That doesn't mean that we are developing infrastructure, doesn't mean that we have to, I mean, destruct some of the existing then historically important buildings or roads that has to be um, destroyed. We should not do that. Then we should properly plan a collective across all categories so that a redundancy uh, should not be happen across all sector. So infrastructure should be built for many generations and it should not overlap since we know that uh, we have overlaid a number of um, infrastructure development. If we do, we are minimizing that overlap or we control that overlap uh, then that will avoid wastes, even redundancy also. So there are four practice approach to development of infrastructure based on the principle of sustainability versus new infrastructure based on the understanding of the finance of the consumable for the construction. Means efficiency, resource efficient, efficient resource use patterns should be followed. Then uh, second approach is then we have to look into the geographic and demographic characteristic and it reads when you construct an infrastructure, right? That's why, uh, I mean, for example, what is happening when we construct a number of, uh, I mean, houses and number of uh, that, um, uh, that when we conglomerate or we develop uh, towns in the uh, I mean, hilly region without proper planning, we have to um, keep all that in our mind. Now we, uh, that is, for example, uh, we develop uh, towns near the rivers and so on. We should avoid all that thing. Then overcoming the existing skills and avoiding the new skills in development infrastructure bans on the urban rail divide. That's why Louis focus and we have to understand that we must try to minimize urban rail divide. Whatever the facility at the best possible way, we must give that facility infrastructure. We should develop such kind of infrastructure in rural area also that will minimize what are the possible um, the impact uh, of uh, urbanization and so on. Then approach number four is that thing, the existing infrastructure and association of solutions also prioritizing new infrastructure development based on association and luxury over a period of time. Then we know that infrastructure is a part of uh, that uh, sustainable development is very important. Then if we look into that, how sustainable development or goals in infrastructure and what is our uh, you know, common effort, global common effort, uh, effort uh, for having a sustainable infrastructure? Point from the point of sustainable development goal. If you look into it, SDGs of the SDGs 17, SDGs, SDGs 9 talk about infrastructure. It talks about industry innovation infrastructure. If you look that, it is not only SDGs 9, it takes care of most of the goals, when you have properly planning industrialization, properly planning innovation infrastructure development, it takes care of most of the uh, that uh, SDGs goal. Like, for example, it says that in that uh, SDGs report, it says that uh, it directly, indirectly, and that includes all 17 of the SDGs, 121 of the 169 targets, means 72% of the target. For example, for uh, five of the seven S diseases. That's I told you when we talk about the proper health and sanitation infrastructure, we have good health and well-being, uh, well-being, 
then clean water and sanitation, affordable and clean, all these taken care when you have a proper infrastructure development. If we barely plan it, then that have harmful impact, impact on about SDG goals, about people's health, and it has impact on environmental impact that talks about the two important goals. If you look into SDG goal perspective, that's on SDG 14, SDG 15, then to, you know, uh, culturally important size, uh, size like sustainable cities and communities may not be happen, right? This is how is this is that. Then what are the indicators of infrastructure? As we know that infrastructure in structure that perform badly have a significant negative impact on economic growth and of course considerable dis dissatisfaction among you. The point is that we know that uh, the benefit of infrastructure are, I mean, when we talk about characteristic about the benefit is also, I mean, we know that economic benefit also, social benefit also, environmental benefit also. If we do not properly plan it, that have negative impact. So if you look from SDC's perspective, uh, what are the important targets and indicators to achieve that SDC 9? It has, you know, uh, to look into that is as uh, to achieve that SDG nine, we have eight targets and twelve indicators. Eight targets are target ones talk about develop quality, reliable, sustainable, and resilient infrastructure, including regional and towns around the region. Uh, then to support economic development, human well-being, with a focus on affordable, equitable access for all. To look into that. Two important basic indicators are proportion of the rural population who live within two kilometers of on all season road. See, here comes your road infrastructure. Then patients are fried bullums by mode of transport. This is about a, the kind of what kind of transport facilities you are giving. Right. Then same way uh, in goal number two, it uh, talks about promote inclusive sustainable industrialization. <clears throat> that significantly rise industry share of employment and growth on the GDP. That's told you that we know that when we have proper infrastructure, if we deploy a proper plan that will give livelihood, that will give uh, job, right? So to look into those uh, target, then, you know, uh, two important uh, the indicator are look into GDP and the per capita, manufacturing value added as a proportion of GDP and per capita. Then another indicator is manufacturing employment as a proportion of total employment, right? This is how they look into the progress of that specific, uh, that goal, goal number nine. In the same way, when we are trying to achieve the access of small scale industries and other enterprises in particular in developing country to financial service and cooling, affordable credit, integration to value chains and market. So these are some of the, uh, that uh, indicator like proportion of small scale industries in total industry value added with a loan or line of credit. Then for upgrade infrastructure and retrofit industry to make them sustainable uh, with increased resource efficiency, goal number four, uh, that uh, for that look into that means upgrading the infrastructure, then, then carbon dioxide inside emission per unit of value added. That is one of the indicator in the same way then goal five, uh, uh, that uh, target five, uh, goal number nine, uh, target five talks about enhanced scientific research, upgraded technological capabilities of industrial sectors in all countries, in particular developing countries, including by 1990, 1930. So to look into this uh, target, indicators are research and development expenditure as a proportion of GDP. That's why we're talking about in India, we are not spending so much in research. So we need to improve in that way. That's why most of the all, I mean, uh, that's, uh, academic scientists their policy planners also talking about. Then resources in full-time equivalent per million inhabitants. <coughs> inhabitants. See, these are some of the indicators. Then uh, target six about facilitated sustainable and design infrastructure development in developing countries through financial technology to look into that total official international support. This is one of the indicator. Then goal number uh, that, uh, then next target is uh, uh, seven is support domestic technology development, research, innovation, developing countries. But to look into that proportion of medium and high tech industry value added, total value added, right? 
these are some of the indicate, indicator. Then, you know, these are the indicators, uh, targets in the indicator. Then let us look into the progress. If you look into the progress based on the indicators provided by the UN committee, see the progress so far we have made, we have uh, uh, across the globe, what we are achieving is manufacturing value added, which was uh, given as one of the, that indicator from 2002 to 2018. This is the progress so far, man, right? In 2008, we were having this much value. In 2018, for example, in world average 2008, we have 15.9. Now in, in 2018, it is, it is 16.5. In case of Oceania, <coughs> it is decreasing, right? So in the same way, when we talk about proportion of medium high and high tech, MBA and in total MBA, manufacturing value at that 2000, 2016, that world average we have in 2000, we had 40.5 and 2016, we had that 44.7. This is progression in, but you know, it is not evenly distributed, right? So if you look into global spending resource development uh, that at least uh, 2 trillion a year with wide disparities among countries. That is, uh, this is a very, we know that. So, we do, but uh, we increase, uh, I mean, if you look into proportion of GDP growth in global context, it increased from, in world average, 1.52% in 2000, now it is 1.68% in 2016. In Europe and America, uh, that uh, that is that figure is 2.2 one uh, percent of the GDP was spent in 2016, and uh, in others uh, that uh, Africa and Western Asia this is the thing. So this is about in India, in the uh, to look into this goal we have uh, some major structural reforms like uh, implementation of goods and service tax, and uh, FDI regime liberalisation, ease of doing business reforms. And then some of the more flexible programs like we have Make in India, Start in India, Stand Up India, and Skill India. These are some of the, I mean, uh, that uh, I was um, in a, uh, that infrastructure development uh, policy and planning, right? Then if you look into some of the progress, we know the construction of national highway and roads, <coughs> we are increasing. It was 4,410 kilometer in 2014 and 15. Now it is 10,924. In the same way, we have uh, 12 major ports have cargo handling capacity of this much 1,477.22 million tons in 2018, which was grown 84% from 2014-15 figure. Communication, if you look into communication also, which uh, we talk about ICT components, uh, that is very much, uh, we know that improving barrier I mean, in a high speed, high progress, we are having good progress. Research and development uh, also government has strengthened to the office of uh, the controller general of patent design trademark. By appointment of a large number of examining controller to increase the examination of design. Uh, and uh, it has increased 12,661 to 18, 19 from say 7,545. It's almost 80%, more than 80%. Patent also in the same registration of design, grant of uh, patents. In some way we have uh, and the skill in the program also we have Pradhan Mantri Kausal because of now, right? So if you look into that uh, as per NITI 2019 report, we have 70% of our habitation are connected by all weather roads. For every 100 persons, 49 have internet sub subscriber, 88 have mobile connection, and 12.13%, uh, 13% of the labor force is employed in the manufacturing sector. Right. Then if you look in the road connectivity again at the national level, it is close to 70% of the targeted habitation that have been <coughs> covered under Pradhan Mantri Gram Sarajosna. And uh, if you look into employment and manufacturing sec uh, sector, we have <coughs> as per periodic level so source uh, for survey, 12.13% of India's total for, uh, workforce, the highest share of the workforce employed in manufacturing. <coughs> and if you look into uh, state-wise, Gujarat 20.04%, Daman and Dew 
Then if you look in the internet density and the mobile tele density, this is the status. We have, as I told you, 100 people in the country. Of every 100 people, 88 percent has cellular, 49 percent has internet sub subscription. Right. And uh, in that uh, line, uh, that Himachal Pradesh, Punjab, Kerala, Tamil Nadu, Karnataka, Gujarat, and Delhi they have 100 percent. Then internet subscription density, Himachal Pradesh uh, highest. And the internet access is in, uh, in Delhi among the you know, territories. Then, uh, unfortunately, we are facing a lot of challenges during this global pandemic. Uh, that you know, because of that, when we deal pandemic, it had say it has a severe blow to manufacturing and transport industries, and that that causes disruption in global value chains. You know, the supply chains of production and consumption that suddenly breaks. Then the supply products as well as job losses are happening. We know that declining workforce in some of the sectors. Aviation industry is also affecting. Already, you know, manufacturing growth is also, I mean, I mean, declining. So this is what we are facing during this global pandemic. Uh, personally, in the one side, if you look in the positive side of that global pandemic, we look from infrastructure development, and if you look into healthcare system, we have, I mean, I mean, all over the world, I mean, the infrastructure is uh, because of uh, this, we have developed good infrastructure, which is in the process. Even India is taking key role in, you know, developing the vaccine and all these things. These are the positive side, we can say, as far as infrastructure development concern uh, in India, when we talk about uh, this positive side of this uh, particularly, and this global pandemic. These are some of the challenges, you know, we know that uh, over the, all over the world, the internet connection is uh, that increasing and all these things, but uh, some of the, uh, I mean, population and least developed countries, still they are not able to uh, get those type of facilities, right? So <clears throat> this is about today's solution. These are some of the references. Thank you.